let's start now. Okay, welcome everyone on YouTube, most likely, to <laughs> the fifth year semester guidelines. Our clinical team for this year is me, Pranav, fifth year medic from India, living in Dubai. Next up is our board member, Sandra. Sandra, go ahead, introduce yourself. Um, so yeah, I'm Sandra and I'm a fifth year uh, medic uh, and I'm board member of the clinical team. And last up, we have Shiv, who is not with us today. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we have some good guests with us. We have the MIMSA president, uh, Rahul. Hello, I am not Shiv, but I'm also- He's not Shiv. I'm not Shiv, <laughs> but, but I'm a fifth year medic also, in the second semester of fifth year. And, and our final guest is uh, former MIMSA VP and uh, current doctor, uh, Dr. Rodrigo. Hello guys, happy happy to be here and uh, happy to be called a doctor. <laughs> that happened <laughs> yet. He made it. He made it. I made it. You will. <laughs> okay, uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. We already know how the exam structure works. Uh, not, uh, I don't think we need to go over this, but. Just a little recap, uh, ZK means you're going to have an examination with like probably written, practical or oral. Uh, it'll be graded from A to E. If you have K, that means it's a colloquium, uh, most likely with like a project or like uh, some essay, some written exam, it'll be graded as pass or fail. And if it's a Z, that means it's just a straight up credit. It's um, like attendance mainly or homework or robots. Um, all of those are pretty, pretty straightforward. OK, overview. Um, so Sandra, me and Rahul are still uh, in the middle of our fifth year, so that's uh, we've done surgery, intensive oncology, infectious, and we're still approaching our internal block. Uh, neurology psych, we're still again in the process of doing. Um, there isn't really much to say because this year, from my experience so far, has been like a, I would say like a little preview to your state exams. Um, I don't know, uh, Rodrigo, do you want to add like a little preview for fifth year? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the only thing I would like to say is that like take fifth year, like I seen for me, fifth year was really, it, it, it used to not have, for example, surgery or internal medicine that it is like, subjects last year and at first you know like there was a big backlash and we were very like unhappy about it but as time went by um yeah so you do a state exams right you start noticing how everything seems so familiar so basically for example fractures you never ever ever study fractures and people in six years used to struggle a lot when studying fractures for surgery now it seems much more easier to know like some like monteguia fracture because you've heard about it you know you know more or less how what it is you might you might not remember same for internal, I'll mention it later during the internal the internal block, but again, covering internal the right way, doing notes the right way. If you're doing notes for fifth year and you're taking proper notes and you're going deeper on things that you like or you like find interesting, it'll help you enormously. And again, you'll have, have the, the job done for your state exam next next year. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Rahul, is there something you want to add? Um, yeah, like to be honest, like, the surgery was difficult just due to time constraints, but we'll talk more in surgery. But it definitely seems like um, it's a foundation for the for uh, for the next year, especially like surgery because it was hard. Cause so many, so much questions, but the the exam compared to the question list was so different, like how it is. But I'll, 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 we will talk some more when we get there. I think, yeah. But awesome. I think Rodrigo awesome. summed it up really well. Uh, Sandra, something you want to add for this? I think you guys mentioned everything, so. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, well, I guess we'll move on to our prerequisites, which is basically all <laughs> state exams. <laughs> so this year, um, you have to get everything out of the way before you do your state exams, uh, including check in case you're currently doing it. Uh, 
um, as well as an individual project, which we'll touch on a little bit later on. All right, starting with surgery. Uh, Sandra, do you want to start off with this? Yeah. Uh, OK, so surgery, like Rodrigo said, uh, they started with this subject with last year's students. Um, and uh, so basically the exam is oral. Uh, so where you pick basically one question from general and from special part one and special part two. Um, so for books and materials, I used Manisha's and Leah's document uh, mainly. Um, I found it really helpful. Uh, I also used uh, the lectures uh, from uni, uh, especially for uh, the gastroenterology part. Um, and um, I also found this website, Teach Me Surgery. I think Pranav also used it, but I found it really like I found it late later. I, I wish I could have found it a bit sooner. Uh, because this website was really nice. Uh, I use it mainly for fractures. Uh, it's well explained and it's short. And uh, yeah, basically everything you need to know for fractures, because uh, the fracture part, like Rodrigo said, it can be, it's very, because we haven't learned so much about it. Um, so yeah, I found that website really helpful and yeah. Do you want to say anything for that, Rodrigo? No, that's that's mainly about it. So basically, surgery has uh, six, seven blocks. They were looking on uh, changing the questions because there's some questions that uh, you have in fifth year, have in six years, such as gunshot wounds of the cranium that make no sense. So basically, they've been looking to change the questions. So I'm not like whenever you're looking at this or whenever you're hearing this, maybe the questions have changed, but basically, uh, fifth year covers uh, blocks A, B, C and D, most of it. And then you got like this little like uh, neuro, uh, you got neuro that is actually covered by the neuro, and then you have udo that is completely new, and you have pediatric surgery that is completely new. But again, like what you're gonna say is that like, uh, again, fifth year used to be a very chill, one of the chillest uh, years around. Now you have to study all these things, but it's just weird, you know, it's just weird. Because once you've done your state, then you think, oh, Thanks God, I actually studied for fifth year surgery. That's that's the feeling you get. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, one thing I will add though, um, just in terms of the, the the number of questions and stuff, it might seem a bit intimidating at first because you have like 140 or 150 questions, which is on the like a, the higher end of questions we've done before. But uh, a personal advice, I would just say don't be intimidated by it because most of the stuff that you've already that you see you've already covered even if you feel like you don't know it the more you revise it the more you will the more you'll understand it um in terms of time frame for the exam i would i would say it's uh, it's possible you can do it in three weeks i don't want to like give a uh like an exact time frame but yeah i think three weeks is a good amount uh, as Sandra mentioned, Teach Me Surgery, I again, I, I wish I knew about it earlier because it's got like the basic principles of all surgeries, abdominal surgery, orthopedic surgery, all the questions that you would like to refer to. I would I would definitely recommend that. Um, Oxford Handbook of Clinical Surgery, another great reference source. Uh, it has everything like head to toe as a reference source that you would that you would need for your exam. And um, and one thing for the exam I'll just mention is that it's very relaxed. It's like almost like you're having a conversation with the uh, with the examiner. So don't stress about this and uh, you you most likely get it out of the way in the first go. Um, Rahul, is there something you want to add to this? Yeah, um, just like you said before, there's a huge disparity of the stuff you study and the actual exam. But um, the hardest part for me was the names of like the different surgical procedures. And if I knew about teachmesurgery.com before, I think that'd be really helpful because I quickly looked, it's, it's really good. So yeah, and I think you guys said everything else. It was really good. It was a bad exam. Brilliant, brilliant. brilliant. Um, all right, then we move on to intensive care. Uh, Rodrigo, take it away. 
Yep. So basically, I did intensive care in uh, in Pekaska. I don't know if um, if the blog still like stands the same way, but uh, basically, it used to be from like 10, 15, 12, 30. And honestly, people at least in Pekaska, I know, I know, and like I know a bit about Bonitsa, but in Pekaska, they're very, very good teachers for the most of it. They many times they speak proper proper uh, English. They're known for intensive care doctors in the Czech Republic to go to Ireland to do locums and so on. So basically, like there are some people with some good experience. If you're interested in going to the, to study in in Ireland as well, you can ask them about it. And it's a very practical thing. They know a lot. They really want you to focus on the on the important things. And uh, there is this uh, document from uh, from Henrix. It's short. It's straight to the point. But that's what you need. Okay. You can also use this uh, European resuscitation counseling yeah. guidelines, especially I think for Sorry. Bonitsa, the guy really likes it. And uh, for the creditors, he takes uh, his questions uh, from there. But mainly, again, uh, honestly, if you're from Bonitsa, the guy has some nice lectures, I believe. But in Pekaska, this Henrix document is short, is straight to the bone, but you need to know every single little detail you have there. And also yeah. for me, uh, I saw three exams, super important shocks, knowing the difference between crystalloid, colloids, and especially when to apply a colloid, when to apply a crystalloid, or when to give up on these ones and start using vasoconstriction. And the algorithms, they seem confusing, but you need to have them straight up and be uh, like understand them and be ready to be asked like a each doctor has his own way to find the algorithm, so, so like be also ready for that. 100%. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I uh, completely agree, actually. That's a uh, great point there. Um, for us this year, uh, I, I think Sandra and uh, Rahul had it the same way. We had the opportunity to actually go to the simulation center oh, for yeah, right. like oh, a... a, a <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, like, like I was for the like first group last year. Uh, oh yeah 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 uh right well the simulation he froze yeah yeah but i no i think i i think he was trying to say the like the, the simulation sound is like like really 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 good and they really help with the Pekoska, i think rodrigo knows as well uh with data he did like simulations on kind of like uh the the simulation center and it was really really helpful because it really brought like clinical medicine and what you've known for the previous years together it was really good mm -hmm. like personally my my exam was weird well, i won't say weird except he asked the same algorithm over and over so you just need to be patient with him and like for my exam, I was with two other people and it was like a combined exam. It was really weird, but I think you just got to, I think it's just one of those things. Yeah, I think it depends. It depends on the examiner as well, because uh, in Picasca is known for like in Bonitza, you all tend to have the same examiner, uh, which is the, the head of the education for the department. But in Picasca, I think there's going to be, there is a wide variety of people. And it's true that some, like the thing with these people and the thing that happens if you're especially not in fourth year, but if you're usually like it's more, you're more prone to face uh, doctors that are more doctors than teachers. And oh, this, 100%, 100%. This, yeah. this, uh, this is a weird thing, the weird life. I'll talk about manuology experience uh, later, but basically like it's not a teacher and he doesn't know what's been taught in class. He doesn't know, he's just like one guy, I guess that's how they choose him. No, they just have like a, like a sample of like five, seven teachers. And they, maybe they, this guy have been examined by people that have not examined in the past 10 years, you know? Like there were some yeah. people that came to me, I was like, I haven't examined in the last 10 years. So let's just talk about something. So also try to not, um, I think I mean, at the end of the day, you have to really study by the book, but at the same time, when you're in the exam, don't try to think only by the book, because try to think like, these guys are very clinical and they have their own way to thinking. They have like some stuff that for them is important, but for you might not be important, something. So yeah. think out, out of the box and don't like get like surprised if they're actually trying to like, they put things in different way. You know what I mean? Like you study this way and they are, they, they mean the same thing, but they just like focusing from some different angle, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, that's an important thing to actually consider, you know, in order for, for fifth year and sixth year especially. Yeah. The, the the kind of analogy I give is like they expected me to be a veteran doctor when applying the, the amount of like a beta blockers. I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't know that, you know, so it's like it was like that. But it, it, it was a super OK exam. Like it was super nice. Yeah. And, and very short. Yeah, it was very doable. Yeah. 
Yeah. Awesome, uh, awesome. Sandra, uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I want to add that make sure that you know ABGs well. Like I use Geeky Medics. It has like quiz uh, where they basically um, tell you like it's basically a case study and then you have to guess if it's like metabolic acidosis, alkalosis, respiratory acidosis. Um, I found it really helpful. Um, and also, like Rodrigo said, like memorize the algorithms, uh, especially like ELS, ALS, uh, for tachycardia, bradycardia. And they want to also know like dosage of especially like adrenaline, amiodarone. Um, Epinephrine. Yeah. I mean, like, as in like in anaphylactic shock, it's important. Yeah, yeah, anaphylactic shock, yeah. Because um, I remember I asked. Uh, the, uh, the doctor's like, do we need to know all the dosage for all these drugs? And he said mainly like amiodarone and adrenaline. Um, so yeah, I use also Oxford's handbook of clinical medicine, especially for the organ failures, like uh, acute liver failure, ki acute kidney failure um, for sep sepsis. Um, and it's really well explained, so I would recommend that. Um, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, I think that's pretty much uh, that for intensive. Okay, moving on, oncology. Uh, so oncology actually is one of the, well, not the only ones, but one of the exams that uh, you have a proper textbook to study from. It's made by the uh, the oncology department, uh, and it's about 350 pages. So very good reference source for your exams. Um, as for the block, it's a two week block, and um, it it depends because you might not get to see many patients, uh, obviously because of COVID and stuff. But um, it's a it's a very interesting block. I think uh, I I, re I really enjoyed it. Uh, as for the exam, you have uh, it's split into two parts, a general and special. Um, the one thing that I would uh, probably focus on would be the treatments because um, you might have already covered the anti-cancer drugs in pharmacology, but uh, for example, the monoclonal antibodies or like the immunotherapy and stuff, those stuff you're going to go into a little bit more detail. So don't be surprised if you get asked like different questions like that are not related to the question that you picked. They want to know that you have a good understanding of uh, like oncology in general. Um, I also use Pathoma just to brush up like my uh, like uh, tumor knowledge. Uh, the lectures were also pretty good. Um, AMBOS, always a good resource. Uh, osmosis, very good to visualize the tumors. Um, and yeah, I, th I think that's about it. Uh, is there something you want to add, uh, Rahul? Um, I'm actually doing clinical oncology like right now. So, I mean, right. I'll I'll take your <laughs> advice instead, I guess. <laughs> but like, yeah, the, the clinical oncology, like the textbooks like super good. And the question list is almost directly from the book, except for the hematological uh, malignancies. I've noticed this and they're not and they and they aren't also in like the documents in the MIMS hub and I think the only way to do it is by just researching on your own but pathoma is the best for uh for hematological uh, oncology I think from what I've read so far so I don't know. agreed agreed uh Rodrigo is there something you want to add yeah uh for hematonco I will actually recommend studying ambos that's the usual um resource that you use for your state exams and it has a lot of nice things uh, when talking about hematological uh, issues, really focus also on the diagnosis, uh, learning the different steps. Uh, especially if you're doing Bonitia, there's this guy who's really going to go deep on like what is uh, cytogenetics, what is fish, and so on. So basically, it's actually good. And in, in numbers, I think it tells you like first you take the 
fluid blood count. Then you're going to have to do a, a biopsy, you know, a bone marrow biopsy and so on. And then uh, I see here in the presentation, farm notes for chemotherapy and hormone therapy. And this is 100% true because I got chemotherapy on my exam. And basically, I just literally spit out the... Uh, um, there was these guidelines, right, in pharmacology, the pharmacology uh, department, it gives you some guidelines. So basically, I just literally spit out, like, alkylation agents, this, 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 and this, you know, like, stuff like that. And they were very, very happy with just mentioning names, you know, like mentioning literally like names and so on. And they just wanted like a bit of the, I think they focus a lot and we don't realize in like um, adverse, adverse effects. So basically like uh, she actually, the, the, the examiner actually went into like adverse effects and like tumorless syndrome and like kidneys and how to protect the kidneys, how to protect the bladder and so on. So they, they really like that thing. Fantastic, fantastic. Sandra, um, is there something? Oh, sure, go ahead. Uh, no. Just quickly, uh, I think I think Hussein put his hand up. And, yeah, and I love that. Yeah, I, I, just, I just wanted to mention that um, the exam is actually takes place in three different places. So you can either have it in Bohnitsa, you can have it in the uh, Svedov Pavilion, uh, which is the Masaryk Memorial Center. Uh, but you can also have it in the third place, which is like the Masaryk Center. So it's actually divided between like Hemato Onko in Bohnitsa, Radio Oncology in the Masaryk Pavilion, and then Medical Oncology in the Svedov Pavilion. So depending on where you have the exam, make sure you focus on like those topics. So if you have in the radio oncology, radiation oncology department, make sure you like proper like focus on radiotherapy. If you have it in bone needs then focus on uh, hemato oncology. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, that, that's it, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um Sandra, is there something you want to mention for Onco? Um yeah, uh for Onco I used Maria's documents uh for general and special uh, I, and Pathoma, uh, but also like, uh, cause I had in Bohunitsa and mostly like Hussein said, um, they were focused on hemato-oncology. So I would recommend using osmosis for hemato-oncology because uh, I didn't find anywhere um, where you can study for hemato-oncology. So I use mainly osmosis. Uh, and Pathoma. Uh, Pathoma was really good. Um, and, uh, yeah. That's awesome. it. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Um, all right, then we move on to infectious diseases. Uh, infectious diseases is kind of like micro uh, part two. It's, uh, you're going to have to like revise all of the microbes that you went through in third year. And in a way, it's good because um, you might have forgotten it over the time you did like farm and pathophys, et cetera, et cetera. So if you if you found sketchy micro useful, uh, I would I would def definitely recommend just going over it again, just so you have like a mental image of all the all the microbes. Um, one thing that I learned from Rahul actually, and I used of Rahul's was his flashcards. Um, Rahul has a very nice technique, which I'll let him elaborate on in a second, but it's uh, it's a really nice way of how he studies for his exams. Uh, but before we get to that, just uh, another thing, they have a textbook for infectious diseases as well. I personally did not use it, but I know some other students have. Um, AMBOSS, always good resource. Uh, Agata's document, yes. Um, if you are running out of time, uh, her document summarizes everything in like maybe 30 pages because you're going to get a triplets. So like, you could get, um, well, you could get chicken pox, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, chlamydia, and this thing. So it'll be all in one set. So if you know one question, you most likely would have an idea what the other is going to be. Uh, Rahul, if you want to elaborate on infectious. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, what what happened? Like, I found Agatha's document a, a little bit later, and uh, like I like I like I have the blessing of having like friends who's already done the exam before me, and then like she told me that like the question list slightly changed. I, I heard, and uh, the question list that's kind of circulating everywhere doesn't have the like uh, filianosis, 
but feelingosis is now added to the, the the newest exam. But it's just I think it's just a very few questions. But we'll update it on the MIMS hub. But the main thing that I use the infectious de uh, disease textbook for is the fact that it has like uh, incubation time and onset of, of symptoms and stuff. So the best thing that I did was I I, I just took a flashcard and then I just wrote every single in incubation time for like hepatitis for um hiv prodrome and things like that uh, and i memorized it because like i was told that during my block the incubation time was really important and then after that i supplemented agatha's notes and i used a like flashcards to actually make triplets so i collect all my information beforehand onto one page and then i condense it down into a uh, like a flashcard and then i memorize this flashcard and i think that's that really helped me because like in the exam I had the question about um, schistosoma and like methotrexate and sulfur drugs. So like I literally picked up the question, like I, I like, like like I remember it was the the flashcards with the, these three questions on, and I just like just regurgitated. And the best thing about the infectious is the fact that the person we got wasn't the like the main main examiner, but he he was like he he wasn't that bad he was super nice and he let me explain everything he was a little bit pedantic about the life cycle of schistosoma but you're not gonna fail you're not gonna fail for that and like he was it was a it was a very nice exam so i'd say in summary the best thing to do is go through the textbook infectious disease to just get the incubation times in case you get you get asked that but other than that i i personally use sketchy micro and the and agatha's document for infectious it was, it was a very straightforward exam and it, and it took like two weeks to study for it, I think, more than enough. Awesome, awesome. Um, Sandra, is there something you want to add for infectious? Um, I want to add, uh, I also use Sketchy Farm for, especially for antibiotics, antivirotics and antifungals, mainly because I just couldn't physically just read from a book. I just needed sure. Sketchy. Um, so yeah, I would recommend that. And I also found this microbiology and infectious disease flashcards. Um, it, you can just Google it. Uh, basically, uh, it has flashcards and also like, um, like a case study, like where they explain, um, I don't know, like this patient has these symptoms, um, whatever. And, uh, like it, it's it's really good. I found it really helpful, um, and I also found this source late. <laughs> uh, I wish I found it earlier, um, but it, it was really nice. Like if you want to see any clinical case study, uh, and yeah, then this will be very useful. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, just as a quick reminder, try try to get the official question list if possible. Like I found out the feelingosis thing on the day of my exam, so it's like you you don't really want that. In, like the last minute, you don't know a question you're about to get. So, so just make sure with uh, the head of the infectious disease before going to the exam. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, Rodrigo, do you want to add something for infectious? Um, I used the the white book. It's a bit dry. You know, it's like uh, you're asking me, you're asking me why book, but uh, but it was, it was okay. Like at the end, you just need to like, just need to grind it. And um, only thing is, there is two, there is two departments you can take it. You can take it in bullet or uh, children's, right? Um, in so basically, if you go to children's, of course, any diseases happening in in children will be more important. And when I had my block there, uh, the guy there's like this this lady that is the head of the department, and you have like a like a guy that is like the the, the vice head, right? And he told us that in case of any like oh, by the way, the lady is uh, specialized in uh, Borrelia, and um, so. If you get, you know, what I mean, like, if you, if you're gonna go to 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 children's, make sure you know a lot about Borrelia. And then uh, the guy told us that in case of anything bad happens, he will can always, so he will always ask you in order for you to get an E. He will probably ask you about dehydration, size of dehydration in children. So basically, because most of the time, this like uh, infection, especially gonna cause fever, and fever is gonna cause dehydration. So basically, this is gonna be the life saving thing. So he told us, literally, he told us, look, people don't usually fail this exam. But if they are on verge, I usually will ask you about dehydration. So you have to like mention signs of dehydration, especially in children, and, and you'll be good to go. That's what he said. Perfect, perfect. That's some great advice there. 
Um, all right, I think infectious is done. Is there anything else you guys want to add? All right. You mentioned most of it. Great. Uh, psychiatry. All right. Uh, Rahul, do you want to start off with this? Yeah, so uh, we had psychiatry in person. It's a two week block. To be honest, it's not that bad of a block. It's a little bit long, but it, it isn't bad. And at the end, you have a credit test. They they give you like at the end of each day, they give you a, like a robot, like a small robot you have to do before the next lesson. And the, the credit test was very, very similar to the uh, to these to these robots. To be honest, I can't lie. The credit test was like quite difficult personally. It was a lot about uh, DSM and ICD uh, classifications and very precise like symptoms like uh, all 10 characteristics of like a schizophrenia or something so the best thing to do is just pass the credit test and i think it's uh, like everything i think it's 75 uh, it's 70 percent to get the credits the actual final um there's a document in the the mimsa study hub i i mainly used it um there's a b and c sections like a is the general b is the special and c is like a clin like clinical therapies of uh, the special psychiatry um it was hard to find c because we as uh, we will we we need to up uh, upload the section c onto the mimsa hub like we I'll, I'll do that now i forgot to do that but uh, i just used the document i also used um the step one uh book first aid to do um psychiatry and it was like super straightforward um, and that is because like in the States you use DSM while well, in, in Europe you use ICD. So it depends on which le which le uh, lecture you see, they, they give both. But I personally like the DSM. And uh, the best thing to like for psych, I just used a hell of a like loads of mnemonics of, for, for like the, the, the like symptoms of like and characteristics of things. I mean, it's a long exam, but it's like it's super nice. Uh, it depends. Um, the examiners slightly change the difficulty of the exam. There's a there's a psychotherapy lecturer which I got personally, and she asked a lot about the psychotherapies of I had a uh, PTSD, so she asked a lot about uh, SNRIs and SSRIs and um, benzodiazepines and things like that. So uh, it's slightly different. Like I know I know uh, Professor Tina is a child psychiatrist. Um, I personally didn't get him, but I heard like he had a lot of child psychiatry questions, so which which he followed in his lectures. But it, all, overall, it wasn't a bad exam, I'd say. And once again, I'd say two weeks to do it. I, I successfully passed in two weeks. Yep. <laughs> Does Rodrigo want to add anything? Yeah, uh, so basically block A, it's a bit different, it's a bit weird because there's a lot of definitions and so on. So basically try to make your mind about it, try to make it to, to express in your own words, but try to focus on someday some keywords or some things that they really want to know. So what is an illusion, what is a delusion, so on, like they really just try to make some sense of it because it's, I think for me it was the, the hardest thing, you know, like this, there's this like questions at the beginning that are just so weird. Uh, especially this kind of fine clinical management of the mental disorder, the block uh, C, uh, my exam was with Einer and um, he was nice overall, uh, but on block C, I was uh, very focused on my um, pharmacology and he was very focused on he, on the clinical side of it. I seen like psychiatrists are one of the few doctors that are way, way more than just giving like farms and so on, you know, like giving like drugs and so on. So basically he doesn't want you to just say like benzodiazepines. He wants you to know how you treat the patient, yeah. what environment, do you, uh, like how you speak with the patient, how do you need to have people with you or not? How are the lights gonna be? Do you wanna like have the patient with a lot of light? Do you wanna have like a, like a dark environment? Think about these things as well. And in the document that I'm sure uh, Rahul will, will upload yeah. to the MIMSA hub, it actually mentions that. And maybe you're like, yeah, okay, whatever, you know, but like he actually looks for that, you know, like, he asked me in my exam, like with an aggressive patient, where should you position yourself in the, in the room? And the answer was like, there should be no object or no, um, like you should be always be able to reach for the door. You know, the patient should never be between you and the door. You know what I mean? Like you're always thinking like, oh, I don't know, I like, should do this like uh, from more like, a, like uh, I don't know, like, you know, like you're never going to think about where to position yourself, but these people actually do, you know what I mean? These people actually like they're, 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 they're experienced on this one. So I think that's, that's a bit of, of, a, of a different way of, of uh, thinking. And then again, there's different examiners. Most, I think the most common one is Steiner. 
I don't know if I should say this, but he actually offers you to change one question. At least he used to offer you to change one question. So he said like you can change one question, but if you pick another one and it's worse, you have to deal with it. So that's a bit of a of a psychiatric challenge that he he does for you at the beginning. And uh, overall, it's fine. It's actually a fine exam. It's just that again, like there's questions and questions. And for me, honestly, for me especially, the hardest thing was the first few yeah. questions of Loki. You know that they are very hard to put together and make sense out of it. Yeah, to to be honest, it's just a lot of reading, like a lot, a lot of reading. You know, it's like so many words. That's the hardest part of this exam. I wouldn't say it's bad. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, that's some great advice again, guys. Okay, moving on now. Uh, neurology. Uh, Rodrigo, take it away. Yeah. All right. So basically, I took it in Petraska. No, but it's just slightly different. Um, online, I think they just had to like show up to the to the Microsoft Teams thingy. In Pekaska, neurology is very, very, very good. Again, good people with a lot of knowledge. It's so much interaction with patients. Every day you're gonna see patients. Every day you're gonna have to do a full examination of the patient, get the uh, history. Then you're gonna go to back to class. So the, the day starts like, literally you just like get into Paris, full anamnesis, full examination. You go back, you name your patient, you know what he had, you explain the patient, then he'll go with it, like he'll check it on the database and you'll go through his patient notes, explaining, talking about it. Then you have a quick break and then you have like a proper lecture. Again, teachers very, very good. They'll tell you what to focus on because on the last day uh, you have a credit test and the credit test is just basically they give you a patient, you have to do again full examination and then they will ask a few things about like how to examine whether you're like, uh, facial nerve injury is uh, centrally or peripherally located. Again, uh, don't be scared because if you pay attention, it's one of the blocks that you really want to pay attention in class, especially in Pekaska, because they'll tell you exactly what they want for the credit test. There's nothing new from the credit test. You need to have like basic uh, block A knowledge, let's put it that way, and it'll be fine. And then in the, um, in the, in the lecture part, so basically in the, in the exam, this is again a, a department where examiners are not really defined. You might get, you may encounter anyone. This is the one that I had my examiner by some guy who told us he didn't know how to grade. So basically he was like, so how, how does it, the grading system go? You know, like what's the best I can give you? What's the worst I can give you? You know, we had to explain here how like A, B, C, D, F works. So it was a bit weird. So it was a bit bizarre. A lot of clinical knowledge. Uh, what I would tell you, what I would say is that like basically it's more important to know how things look like than exactly the tracks, exactly the paths, exactly the, the weakness of, of L1, L2, L3, L4, you know, like they really wanted us to like, each of us got like explanation of, I don't know, for example, had like um, uh, venous thrombosis of the, of, the, of the patient. So how does he look like? Why does he look like, like that and not like this? Uh, what would you do? Like we had like a huge conversation about like CTs, like would you uh, give him a CT? Oh no, but that's too expensive. So, you know what I mean? Overall, like it's not that like, you, it's not that they really gonna, uh, your, your grade is not gonna depend whether you decide to take a CT or not, but they really want clinical things. So don't die on the details, don't die on the anatomy of it, but really understand what's the difference between an epidura, subdural uh, hemorrhage, what is the guy with, uh, um, with an arachnoid hemorrhage, subarachnoid hemorrhage is gonna come and it's gonna tell you, you know, when you ask him about his headache, he's gonna mention the worst headache of his life. It seems so cliche, but that's really, what they're really looking forward, you know, there's a very uh, clinical department. And then in Bonita, at least online, the guy will choose the questions for you apparently, okay? At least last oh, year, God. that's what he did. And he will love some topics. So check with people who had had it in Bonita before, because there's some topics that will come up way more and are way more important than other topics, you know? So like, yeah. make sure that also you may uh, check those topics and really make sure that you, you know those ones, because that's gonna be, most likely you're not gonna be the ones that they ask you. For the uh, for the study materials, my last notes are fine. They're just deep, you know, it's a lot of anatomy, it's a lot of physiology, like it's actually tough. And then the blog B, there is this document um, that it's basically ambush, okay? So also know how to like, you look at it and you simply just say like, it's huge, but you have to read it once and you have to just highlight what's important and what's not. And you'll see that there's some things, there's some syndromes that they just not important. There is some, 
uh, differential diagnosis when they suddenly they just go like epilepsy and they go three pages of differential diagnosis. You know, like you know those differential diagnoses eventually, so don't focus so much on it first time you're reading epilepsy because that's not going to be what they really want to focus on. So just be smart about studying neurology. I think that's that's my point. Um, uh, like I have to ask you, Rodrigo, is the stroke guy that bad? Because I because I hear like the stroke guy is like the stroke professor is like really rough. Is, is that he, bad? Yeah, I go, I go, I go him. Okay, and oh, it's no. weird. I think he has his. Yeah, I think he has his. I mean, I would say like it wasn't that bad. No one failed, for example. You know what I mean? No one, no one failed. And like, I didn't know neurology like that great. And he still like, you know, he was actually nice to us. You know what I mean? Like he gave good grades and so on. So it's not, it's not that deal. It's just that you have to understand head of uh, head of a uh, stroke unit, right? He comes here and he just told us like he was actually very like it was actually fun because like he told us right like um like uh, meningitis, signs of a meningitis. And we started talking about this, like, keratinic side and so on. And he told us, like, those things on the 60s, when the patients would take two or three days to go to the hospital, you know, they were true. But right now, when a patient has a little bit of a headache, a little bit of neck stiffness, he'll rush to the hospital. So that's not what you have to focus on. So we're like, yeah, I know, but that's what the teacher has told us. And what he was telling us is like, look, guys, it's not your fault you don't know these things. It's the way education works. So, and that really is what it means, you know what I mean? Like my guy walked in with a book and he, with like three or four books and he was like, which book did you study from? You know, cause each book had different things. And we're like, oh, we study from Amos. He had no idea what Amos was, right? So he's like, okay, just let me know what you know. And he was telling that, you know, a lot of things, a lot of theoretical things, but in clinical practice, a patient coming into your clinic, into your stroke clinic would die because you wouldn't be recognizing the small things, the how to differentiate one thing from the other one. So again, he's not bad, you know what I mean? He's not, he's not your preclinical teachers where they would like mold you with like details, right? It's just mm -hmm. that he's the kind of the, he's the kind of teacher that makes you realize how much you know of theoretical, but how little you know from the things that really matter. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Question. it's just that, would you send him for a CT? And you're like, yeah, I mean, like on my book, it says the CT is a diagnostic method, but he'll tell you like, oh, at the end of the month, the department will be broke if you send all, every single teach, uh, every single patient to CT. So you should admit the patient that costs you nothing, costs you dinner for six, 12 hours, see if the hematoma evolves, see if his neurological symptoms evolve, and then you send him for a CT. Of course, a fifth year student, a six year student, you know what I mean? I graduate until you don't go to the hospital and you have to deal with these things, you have no idea how to do it. But again, mm -hmm. your grade does not like, it's a nice conversation, you're scary because at that moment you're scary. You're looking at like at your classmates, you know, you're looking at the other people taking the exam. You're like, oh my God. But at the same time, like your, your, your exams that like your exam does not depend on those things. Gotcha. On those details, okay. you know. I have a question. Uh, so is there a big difference between having your exam in Pekoshka and in Bohunica? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also have a question. Uh, <laughs> seeing as none of us have done it, um, how long would you say you needed to like from start to finish prepare for you know? Yeah, I, I think I think it's one of the ones. I think it's the one that you you take the longest. Because. Again, it depends on where you have it. But I would say like take it chill, stay three four weeks. Because especially because studying it properly, it's going to give you basis for uh, internal, but especially it's going to give you one block of um, of, uh, of surgery. In my state exam, I had a, I had a, um, a question of um, injuries to the spine with a neuro guy, and it was exactly, I said exactly the same thing as I would have said for fifth year. So again, it's weird, but learning fifth, like learning neurology properly will give you the basis for psychiatry because all this like there's a lot of things Alzheimer's for like you know there's a lot of things that is actually like related epilepsy and so on and then at the same time it'll give you one block of uh, of the state exam so take your time especially if it's in uh, in Pekaska take your time and like study properly yeah definitely okay so you would say three weeks three four weeks yeah <laughs> It depends okay. if you have class or not. It depends if you have class or not. Honestly, like, I, it, honestly it's scary. It's scary because it's scary because like it's scary because it's a lot of anatomy and it's a lot of details. The weird thing is that you always study those details and you go to the exam and those details won't matter. But still, when you're preparing, you will want to study the details. You know what I mean? You're not. Your mind is not gonna go like, ah, oh, they're not gonna ask me for this. They're, you're actually gonna be like, okay, what does C5 innervate? How does it look? You know what I mean? Like it. You yeah. tend to go. Again, depends if you're the game Bonitsa or in Pekaska, to be honest. 
<laughs> Looks like we're gonna decide right after the presentation's <laughs> over. <laughs> So wait, if we have, okay, let's just say that I, because I have, I'm going to have classes in Pekashka, so I can't do uh, my exam in Bhunitsa then. Okay. Sandra, you, Sandra, you knew the answer to that. <laughs> she had to make sure. I had to make sure. Okay, perfect. Thank okay. you, Rodrigo. That was no really problem. helpful. All right, internal medicine. Uh, again, Rodrigo, this one's on you. <laughs> well, so in internal medicine, again, uh, it's actually like, it's a weird exam, right? Because uh, it's covering more topics than the state exam. The difference is that technically you're supposed to be divided into different departments, okay? Um, ranging from hematonco, cardio, uh, geriatrics, uh, Pekaska, you know, I mean, most of the groups have it in Bonitza. What happened last year is that Marqueta sends you an email and tells you group 31 has it here, group 32 has it here, group 33 has it here, and that's what you have to refer you to. So basically they will upload uh, dates for different for different uh, departments, and basically like if anyone has it in cardiology, they will have the, this, this, uh, these dates. Again, honestly, it really depends on your department, and within the same, in, within the department, there is different doctors that may ask you for different things. Um, I had it in gastroenterology, and of course, if you have it in gastroenterology, you're really gonna go for for like the like I had like look, this is actually quite 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 interesting. So basically, I had it in in gastroenterology. My questions were uh, Crohn's disease and um, I mean inflammatory bowel disease, and then anemias, right? Anemias, they didn't care. I was talking about anemias, they're laughing at me, you know, because I studied, like, I mean, I did anemias. They're studying, like, laughing at me about esferocytosis, elliptoacids. They're just laughing because they had no idea. They had no idea. What did they ask me about? They asked me about anemia of chronic disease because that's the one they're going to see in uh, gastroenterologists, right? And then in, gastro in the Crohn's disease and inflammatory bowel disease, I started talking about all these like mad things about like x-ray signs and so on. In the end, what they wanted was how was the patient going to complain about? And I was like, oh, well, I mean, there is this thing that you can know you can have iritis, like uveitis, or you can have like sclerosing cholangitis. They go like, no, they lose weight. So they complain because they're like, wait, you know, where did my weight go? So it's again, like the guy told us something uh, and he was like, this is meant to be your first revision of the state exam. That's what we did it for. That's what we want. We want you to do a fresh revision of the state exam. When you go to the state exam, they tell you what we want is for you to have the knowledge of a general practitioner. What it means, the most important things, and when should you suspect this? As in, like, again, loss of weight. Then that's when you should start thinking about Crohn's disease. Don't go, don't overcomplicate things. You know what I mean? Like, go to the uh, to the basic things. So, Felis and Manishas did a very nice document, again about um, based on Ambos and based on different resources. But it is kind of like what Pranav said for Onco. You know, you can go to your pathoma, and you can look through your pathoma, and I want to say for 90% of the questions, that should be enough. Again, depends on the department, right? But 90% of the questions, that should be enough just to know the basics, how the patient looks like, what's the first diagnostic method that you're going to do, and some basic treatments. For the treatments, unless you have it in hematonco, don't learn any quantities. Don't learn any units, okay? But again, if you have it there, corticosteroids are, are usually what they ask for, okay? Corticosteroids is the one uh, drug that they're actually going to ask you for the dosage. The rest... It's usually more than enough. Again, big exam is one of those exams that you think like, oh, I imagine before when people used to not have this uh, these exams, but then now once you do it, once you go into your six uh, to your six uh, year internal uh, medicine exam, and you go like, oh, I actually did this six months ago. You know, six months ago I was studying rheumatology. Then that's when you appreciate or you understand why they're trying to do these things. To actually sounds like weird, but actually trying to help you, as in like forcing you to help yourself uh in regards of six years because again it's funny but internal medicine is exactly the same exam for fifth year than for six year you want there's some stuff like vitamins that you won't need to study for the state but you have to study here right so it's kind of like wait what the hell but at the same time in the state exam the only difference is that you're not talking only with the gastroenterology guy but for each uh question that you have you have some specialists but consider really consider if cardiology is my department, of course, focus on, on cardiology. I have a basic idea of the rest, but don't die again on uh, lymphomas if you have cardiology, because he will just want the basics. Oh, Thank you so much. That, that, was, that was amazing. Um, I have a question, though. Would you say that uh, internal medicine is the hardest exam of fifth year? No. 
Um, I wouldn't say so. I say I would say it's the it's the biggest one, but I don't think it's the hardest one. There's a big difference, right, between being hard to study for or being time consuming to study for, and then going to the exam. Internal medicine is exactly the same analogy of fifth year. You study a lot for it, but then the but then the exam is not is is not equal with it. Okay, I'll tell you that for example, for me, intensive medicine. Uh, intensive care medicine or for example neurology were much harder for the exam itself for those 30 minutes you know they're really taking every single knowledge you have from you all right but in terms of like like how hard is an exam again i feel like there's two different uh, concepts here there's how hard it is to study for an exam this one is very big it's a lot of things it's a lot of topics but then the exam itself is like uh percent of what you actually know you know what i mean you'll mention it but they will just won't be listening to you they just want the main things you know for you they just want to like they just need to see that you understand the basics in order to move to six year again there's can also be like there can always be some 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 teacher that flips there can always be like a teacher that asks you for more but the most common thing is just for them to just know and go for the basics and just want you to have a, like a kind of an idea of what you're going to have to study for in six years. Awesome, awesome. So I think that kind of is like surgery in the same way, like you're, yeah, it's same hard way. to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, same idea and same same, same idea, same goal that they have in mind. And in the end, like it's the same same concept. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much, Rodrigo. Um, before we move on to the final slide, there is um, obviously the individual project uh which all of us have to complete before our fifth year um i know that sandra me and rahul are again still uh, working on it uh, rodrigo would you like to share your experience with them all right my experience with individual project is may not be the more um the, the best example for it but basically in order to start the the six year uh any practices or state exams what you need is two things. You need to finish your, I mean, of course, you need to finish everything, your check and so on. But um, from fifth year, let's put it that way, you need your individual project and your summer practices of gynecology, okay? So make sure you get your, your summer practice of gynecology and your individual project. For those who haven't done it, for those who are looking to do it, you have two ways of getting an individual project. One is through the IS. There is these student studies or something like that, and there's like some thesis and so on. There's a list of... Uh, of uh, topics, so basically you just have to like enroll into one of them, send a message to the guy, be like, hey, what's the template? They give you a template, they give you how you do it, when I do it. Some uh, departments ask you for 45 pages, some departments ask you for five pages. You know, there is no like real way to get it done, okay? Usually you have to like, um, you should have to like write down your your individual project. Again, for me, the hardest thing was about like, it's all the structure, it's all the side quotations and so on, you know, but in the end you have to present it, you have to make either a small presentation and do it in the in the department and so on. Again, uh, the thing with the developer project is that is you put the effort you want and like you can do a great individual project or you can do a new project in five days. It depends on the department, it depends on whether you're going to the, for example, to the plastic surgery uh, surgeon and you're asking for like a proper uh, project. That's up to you, that's up on your interest, that's up on what you wanna do. If you wanna go for it, like usually, and it's very common, no? You go for an infectious topic, okay? Most people, like many people go for public health, like to the public health epidemiology, or they go for the infectious, because infectious is a lot of topics on, on the IS. You go there, you enroll, He'll text you, this is how we do it, 15 pages or whatever it is written down. You have to cover this, 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 and that. You'll make it. You can get it done in 10 days if you actually put yourself to it. You have to present a little presentation, and that will be it. So, again, in your project, is one of those pain in the ass. Try to get it, like, out of the way as soon as you can, because then when you're on your fifth year and you're about to start a stage, you don't want to be thinking about all these things, right? But you can put as much effort as you want. If you're a research guy, if you're actually very interested in something, if you want someone to, something to have in your curriculum, you can always go out of your way, go to the neurology, to the stroke guy, and be like, I'm very interested in strokes. Please let me do a cohort to study. Let me do a, a, a project with you, you know? So like, it's up to you. And I think you put as many hours as you really want on your individual project. That's, that's the end of it, yeah. Great. Um, one thing I will add though for the individual project, if you are looking to, um, like enroll into a project right away and you are struggling to find doctors if you go on the is and if you select individual project uh there's a little tab there lists um if you select lists you will 
uh, you will have a list of available projects that are now uh, that you can en enroll in at any time. Um, there's about maybe currently, if I'm not mistaken, about 10 projects and every every doctor or every uh, professional has like a certain criteria as to what you want to follow, as uh, Rodrigo mentioned. So <clears throat> do check that out. Um, I don't know if uh, Rahul, you would want to add something for this. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty much it. I mean, it depends on like what Rodrigo said. It depends on what you're interested in, right? But um, I mean, like personally, I'm not very good at my experience so far. Like I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, I've started it last like last week. It's it's really like boring and time consuming. But I think you just got like uh, just just finish it. I think. But like um, I've also been told by other other people, you don't have to take the ones from the list. You can go privately to any to any doctor, and then he will just give you credits when like you finish yeah. it when he thinks it's applicable. So I j I just went through the list because it's easy, and I didn't want to email anyone. So yeah, nice, nice. Um, there's the the last thing that I uh, wanted to ask Rodrigo is um, for your summer practice. Um, yeah, you have experience with it, like. Uh, how would you recommend uh, a fifth year going about it? Yes, yeah, so like the thing is okay. So basically, like um, the technically there is two state examiners that two state exams, sorry, that will offer you early dates. One being guiding, one being public. So, in my opinion, try to get it out of the way as soon as possible, just so you have like the chance. If you're bored at home, you know you can go like, yeah, let me get one state out of the way in September. Let me get one state uh, state out of the way in in August. Either like Gaini, that again the prerequisite would have been finish your your examinations, or like by um, public health. That again, if you have your practice, if you have your check, and you have your fifth year completed within the year period, it should be fine. I believe, I'm not sure if this stands still, but like last year there were some people going to Bonitze and asking to do the practices there. So you can actually go to Bonitze, to Husser, and you can ask him like, hey, look, I'm having problems having practices and they actually make a schedule and will get you in. You know what I mean? Like usually many times your practices you have to do them in uh, at home, especially six years. Six years you can like either you do it here when the schedule is, but you cannot go to a doctor, to a pediatrician and be like, hey, I would like to do pediatrics with you. Like Marketa won't allow you to do that. You know what I mean? If you want to do pediatrics, you have to do it with the rest of the class, right? If not, you can just go home to a pediatrician and do it with him, you know, but you cannot do it privately, just put it that way, uh, here in the Czech Republic. So, but that does not stand for 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 Gaini. So basically, Gaini, you can you can always go to Husser, you can always go to like I've I've had like I've I've known people doing it both in uh, Oblini, like in um in the maternity hospital and in uh, Bonitza. You just have to ask the head of the department or the head of education and tell them like your your point, you know what I mean? Like I'm having, I'm struggling, blah, 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 blah. I have two, three weeks here. I think it's two weeks. So I have two, three weeks and he'll actually make a proper schedule for you. Like, you know, like you come this way to this way and you have to like fill in like some, 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 some tasks and so on. Amazing, amazing. That's, uh, that, yeah, go, go for it, Sandra. Uh, I'm actually going to do the gynecology and obstetric in May, I think. And I basically went to the secretary in Bunitsa and I just asked her, like, I have two weeks off uh, in May. Is it possible to enroll me into that? Like, you can also go to the secretary. Because uh, I, I thought maybe we can ask any of the, these doctors, but the doctors would tell you to, like, go to a secretary and ask them. Um, so, yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I know people like usually go through who's here, but it makes sense that eventually they will actually put it to the secretary. But yeah, it's something they can do and people do it. Like, for example, there are some people, if you're like listening to this or watching this afterwards, like if you're in January and your examination period ends like uh, a few days before, you can actually try to get like in Feb, you know, like the, the, the summer practices done in Feb. I know people who did it like in the first two weeks of Feb before starting the new semester and so on. So there's different possibilities. Just my, my opinion or my advice would be to just, again, try to get it out of the way, try to get everything within fifth year out of the way, just in case there is a cheeky date of like, I don't know, Gaini on the 15th of August. And you're like, yo, you know what I mean? Like, let me like flex, you know, let me be the first one to do a static time in my year, you know? Imagine the Instagram post, right? <laughs> like one, like one, out <laughs> one out of five? One out of five. One out of five. That's great. That's great. Um, 
OK, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Rahul and Rodrigo for jumping on this. Like you guys provided some really nice information. Uh, Dr. Rodrigo, might I add? <laughs> um, and if you guys obviously have any questions, Dr. you can Dr. ask Dr. us. <laughs> if you guys have any questions, you can uh, ask us like now or feel free to like contact us at uh, at any point. You can message us on Instagram directly on MIMSA or or anyway, exactly, yeah. Uh, so are there any current questions from the ones who are here? 